Layer 5, the session layer. That's the layer that is on our agenda now. And this presents us with a real challenge because it's really hard to talk about the session layer. There's so little that one can say about the session layer. Remember that the ISOO's I protocol was defined many, many years ago in the world of mainframes and that we've moved on to a world where TCP IP has become the dominant protocol. And a lot of the things that were thought out for the session layer just no longer make sense. So what is the session layer supposed to do? The session layer is supposed to, as the name indicates, manage sessions. It basically says who talks when, or who is allowed to talk when. Uh, now what we've already seen in many of our client server examples is that the client typically makes contact with a server and then there's an exchange of data, the one talks, the other one talks, the one talks, the other one talks, and then they're done. And there's no real layer that's required for that. It, it's just part of the protocol, this sequence of messages. So the session layer is intended as something that enforces uh, dialogue control. Who talks when? There were also a couple of dreams about the session layer that you could have transmission units, almost like a database transaction, where one could send a part of a message, so sort of like a transaction, and then commit it. And then that has been said. And if the line or the connection were to be broken, then you didn't have to repeat that because it's all been said. Or if it broke down during a session, then it would mean that nothing was said, everything would be rolled back, and it would go back to the start of the session. But that, none of that really happened in networking, in the way in which we know networks today. So we're only going to have this one short video about the session layer before we move on to layer four. <laughs> When we look at RFCs, uh, we typically see the dialogue rules uh, described in that RFC that we would be associate with a particular application. So the, uh, the session layer has really, as we've just said, been pulled into the application layer. The RFC that we are looking at now uh, is, again, the SMTP RFC. And uh, what you can see when you begin to read through it is that the dialogue rules are described very, very plainly. Um, it, section 3.3, it talks about the fact that there are three steps in SMT mail transactions. It starts with this mail command, and then afterwards you say to whom it should go and from whom it is received. And uh, if you were to go on through this entire RFC, you would get to a point where you will see that once you've sent the data, in other words, the actual email message, you can at that point quote or you have the option to send another email. So reading through the email gives you all the information, or get, reading through the RFC gives you all the information that you need to understand the full dialogue in this particular application. And the same would be true uh, in the other RFCs, uh, reading through the POP3 RFC or reading through the HTTP RFC, uh, would again tell you what you need to know about dialogue rules, who talks when, and therefore we are indeed leave, left with the problem, what can we say that uh, hasn't uh, that doesn't form part of the application. Towards the end of our discussion of the presentation layer, we noted that we really had to force fit some examples into the presentation layer. We really had to make some examples work uh, that were never intended to be a separate layer. Now, the same is true of the session layer. 
the session layer does not have a lot of merit, arguably, in the current context. Remember again that the ISO OSI model was proposed many years ago and uh, that what it proposed has really been taken over by the TCP IP protocol suite. On the positive side, the upper three layers of the ISO OSI model are deemed to be the application oriented layers. And if those three layers became, become squashed into a single entity that is described in a single RFC, we arguably should not worry too much about it. Recall, for the sake of completeness, that the bottom three layers uh, of the ISO OSI protocol standard are the network oriented layers, and that layer four, the transport layer, provides the glue between the application-oriented layers and the network-oriented layers. There are some developments that are worth watching because maybe they could provide us with more to say about the session layer at some point in the future. One of the examples that we see emerging is the way in which authentication is handled. Uh, in days gone by, there was a very specific way to handle authentication. When someone logged on, they logged on, and then they could perform all transactions, and then they logged out. What we are seeing now with many online retailers and uh, with email providers, a couple of on other online services, is that very often when you walk away from your computer and you return, you are still logged on from that online retailer, you can still order something because they know if it's not you, they can mitigate the risk. They can at some point recall the product before it has even reached you if you didn't really order it. Um, so rather than forcing you to log on for each and every transaction, they may trust uh, that this is good enough and allow you to proceed well into a transaction before you have to log on, if, if you even have to log on. on. On the other hand, it may notice that you are accessing the store from a computer from which you've never accessed it. And in this instance, they may, may become extremely careful and they may want you to uh, uh, answer a two-factor authentication question. So whether it's a known machine from where you're coming, whether it is a transaction that they can, in principle, roll back if it's not you. All of those be things begin to play a role on when they ask you to authenticate yourself. And where previously your auth authorized state was very closely linked to your transactional state, you had to log in, do the transaction, and then log out, those two now become much more loosely coupled. And it's possible for you to have a notion of a session when you are properly logged in and not properly logged in that is not as tightly coupled to the program as such. Now, this is clearly a direction in which things are moving, whether this is going to be a nice example to use on the session layer is not clear yet, but we can begin to dream about systems where we may perhaps get more functionality by thinking about how we can use the session layer in a more innovative manner.